What's up guys, Winter Kills here, we are back with yet again another post commentary feature match. So here at round 3, uh, the, my uh, last locals, we've got for you in this video, Monarchs versus Draco Pals, aka Pepe, whatever you want to call it. Round 3. We gotta have had Monarchs on my channel in a while, so I figured why not uh, try to snag a uh, video of some... Monarch plays. You can see he's gonna open up very strong with that Arab, not Arabis, uh, Eidos in Domain with a Majesty Sphine. So not only is he locked out from extra deck monsters, he's also locked out from monster effects. So he's gonna need a pretty good card to out that, whether it be Raigeki, uh, Archfiend Eccentric, or just a Beat Stick if he can get one. He's gonna open up the Draco face off. Very, very good card for the deck, especially with the Draco Heavy Engine that they have. Uh, I, th it, I think it's become one of the best uh, spell cards in the deck next to Wavering Eyes, easily in my opinion. And do an Upstart Goblin for Arch Phoenix Centric. Very interesting card choice of his. Don't see a lot of uh, builds playing that card right now. And uh, it's interesting because I remember a while back a lot of builds were actually frantically cutting that card because it wasn't the best. Uh, just because you have better cards to play. But now that the deck is hindered, uh, it's actually a pretty decent card to play, especially in a situation like this where he has a match these fiend and domain. And since, obviously, r Eccentric is acting as an MST in the Pendulum Scale, it's going to get around both of those things. Now being able to special summon the extra deck, activate monster effects like this Ignis that he has here, uh, Silverclaw making himself 2100 when he attacks, Gonna be able to out that board pretty easily, all thanks to that Arch Eccentric. Very, very good card choice, in my opinion. Um, always seen a lot of creative card choices coming from the player on the right there. Very seasoned player. Um, never never uh, underestimates, I should say. So, as you can see, Monarchs are gonna lose pretty hard game one. Even though they opened up really, really strong, he just ended up having... To have the out and we're all gonna see another tech choice here that is secret village of the spellcasters i believe double terraforming gonna grab chicken game and secret village definitely gonna be able to get rid of it no problem with the secret village and if you get that spellcaster on board obviously you guessed it no spells for the other player it means no pantheism shutting down the main uh card of the deck essentially very, very key play. So we got double chicken game. Gonna pay 2,000, draw two cards, resolve that Draco face off. And main phase one into end phase here, he's gonna end up setting a field spell. He's gonna set a field spell because, you know, why let your opponent, especially with a draw heavy deck like Monarchs, let them get an extra draw. Uh, I definitely think that was a smart play to get that off his field at least. Now he's got Eidos and Domain. Gonna go for the Tribute Summon. And he'll get Warning thanks to Domain. Basically acting his cost down for the uh, Erebus in his hand. Being able to spin a card, but however being stopped by that Solemn Warning. Definitely a key play to shut down. Wouldn't want to lose any more board presence to that. So, now that the Monarch player has exhausted both normal summons, it's going to be pretty much over for his turn. It's going to swing in for 19. 19.50, I'm not sure how much Luster has. 19.50, 18.50. And then Silverclaw will bump himself up by 300, swinging in for 2100 attack. Going to go for, it looks like, Ignister, main phase 2. It'll get Scoldinged. Interesting card choice. However, I think that's actually pretty common for Monarchs. However, I could be mistaken. Uh, I'm not too sure. Next, Erebus. Engrave will be activated as fact to discard. I believe a Monarch spell trap to add a basically any Monarch back to your hand from Grave. A special summon the Prime Monarch. Comboing off, trying to combo off with the Domain to, again, cost down. Uh, he'll MST it. And not be able to summon the monster since it's no longer on the field. The field cell, I believe, will no longer be activating as the cost down effect. Or maybe it still will. 
it doesn't really matter he has another domain to go grab anyways the MST really not gonna make too much of a difference as we'll see here if he ends up going for the normal summon like that he's gonna spin the card out of his hand the only card in his hand that he has however uh, clutch that card would have been next turn I guess we won't find out so yes it may have been a weird play there but either way he still ended up getting the domain back to his hand thanks to pantheism and now that domain is just chilling there with that Erebus on field. No special summoning from the extra deck for him. He's setting one card face down. And they're just going to go game two. Not being able to out the domain. Really, really unfortunate. It's just It just sucks how your deck can lose to just a field spell. And I think that's one of the, the, one of the funnier things a lot of people bring up when they talk about Monarchs is... One reason they like to play it because it, it beats those pendulum decks because all you have to do uh, is just, you know, play one field spell in the deck and if you get that off, you pretty much win the game because um, it's <laughs> it's basically playing against like Necroz and that Unicorn. But even better is you can't even go into the extra deck. I mean, if it was like Unicorn, you could still summon out your Ignis or beat over the 2300 or whatever or beat over a lot of the Monarchs, as since they only have 2,800 attack, you get over by 50, but you know, you can't even go into the extra deck. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think it's a fair card, or do you think it's just too much, just a one-sided, uh, overpowered card? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you guys. I'll share my opinion, but... Again, opening up with the Erebus Domain combo. Let's see if he has... The cards he needs to out this field. Gonna be looking for Arch Phoenix Centric, Mystical Space Typhoon, obviously a great card to have in the situation. Or just any way to get that field spell off the field. <laughs> Unfortunately, as we all know, the double field spell effect has been in play for a while, so activating a chicken game won't do anything at this point as a, as a way of getting rid of that domain. But imagine if it was still that way, how bad of a card domain would be, especially with so many decks playing cards like Chicken Game, um, or decks would just be mainstreaming Chicken Game, I guess, and it wouldn't really matter too much about a card like Domain, because if you wanted to get rid of it, all you have to do is play your own field spell, obviously. But he's got double scales, looks like a Pendulum Sorcerer in there, and one other card, I can't tell quite what it is, but Wavering Eyes is going to come down nonetheless, he's going to go grab a Pendulum Monster, it's going to be... Actually, a pretty awesome opportunity for Draco Pals right now is he can go search Archfiend Eccentric, which will definitely help him out the domain. But of course, if he goes to grab that, it's not really going to help him, you know, play too much Yu-Gi-Oh in other, in other terms, I should say. Because if he grabs that, it's going to have to pop itself. And after that, he's not going to really have too much in the line of plays. He does only have two cards left in him, but it looks like he's going to go grab the Archfiend Eccentric. Obviously being the best play in the line of trying to make plays. And it looks like he's not going to use its spell effect. Instead, he's going to use its monster effect to basically act as an exiled force to get rid of the Erebus. Um, interesting play. And we're going to see Idea and Eidos come out. That Wombo combo. He does have another Erebus in hand. He has Majesty's Fiend as well. He could definitely make some interesting plays. And I think he summoned the idea by using uh, Erebus's, not Erebus, Eidos's effect to banish a Monarch Spell Trap from your grave to special summon it. Or vice versa. And then getting that combo off to be able to get out both Eidos and idea. And we're going to see a Karaz get bottomless. Stopping that play right there. And we're going to see Idea add back a Monarch Speller Trap. The Domain Cost Down effect coming into play once again. And Erebus being able to resolve his spin effect. Be able to spin a card from anywhere on your opponent's board. Whether it be field, graveyard, or hand. It's going to spin that card. So, pretty interesting. The a after seeing that uh, unfortunate uh, first turn for Dar for Draco Pals, being able to get the Archfiend Eccentric, however, not having any follow-ups, looks like it might 
result in GG at this point. The domain lock is pretty real with this deck. It can be pretty frustrating sometimes. I have uh, luckily not experienced um, this lock too much with playing Atlanteans because I feel like with Atlanteans you can just out that card a lot easier with cards like infantry. But of course, if they have Majesty's Fiend in that card, it's pretty much insta game over unless you've got the twin twister to out it which is why in a matchup like this back row heavy destruction definitely a key uh to surviving a matchup like this or else you're just gonna get sacked uh by stupid cards like domain and matches fiend vanity fiend what have you cards like that triple storm fourth looks like it's gonna be game over monarchs will take the win over draco pals as expected or not expected, I guess this matchup could go either way. It just depends on who can see the power plays first, really. But anyways, guys, that's going to wrap this uh, wrap this up for this feature match. Round 3 we be coming at you guys with round 4 soon enough, so be looking forward to that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the commentary. If so, please let me know in the comments. Anything else you want to let me know, feel free to do so down in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed and if you're new here on the channel, I wouldn't mind you subscribing. I would greatly appreciate that uh, a whole lot. And I cannot express to you guys enough how much I appreciate all of your support thus far. Coming up on 1,400 subs. Getting pumped for that. Got plenty of great stuff for you guys coming in the future. Deck profiles, Synchro Fusionist, and a new Atlantean profile hopefully coming up soon. So stick around for that. Anyways, guys, Winter Kills signing out. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.